فكيف أكون جعان وكيف أكون عريان وكيف أكون مرضان بدون دواء في بلدي الغنية to Fixing South Sudan, your ideas for building the new nation. I am Madingor, and with us in the show is the president of JICA. We have a pleasure to welcome him in this program to talk about the handover ceremony and the importance. Thank you for coming to the program. It is my great pleasure. It is my great pleasure. Um, uh, I'm very happy uh, that I have been able to come uh, to attend this very, very important ceremony. What is your reaction to the excitement that is going on and the huge outpour of excitement from the people of South Sudan? Well, uh, I felt uh, the energy and activity and eagerness to develop uh, South Sudan uh, with these huge people, particularly including young people, children, gathering together uh, indicates the possibility of uh, future peace and development. You have uh, delivered on this bridge. Can you tell us what other JICA projects are on the pipeline? Well, um, with the completion of this uh, uh, bridge, Freedom Bridge, um, uh, we are engaged in another project to uh, repair and rebuild uh, uh, bridges inside uh, Juba. Uh, also uh, underway uh, is a very important project uh, to construct a, a safe and clean water supply. And uh, I'm happy uh, to let you know uh, that this project is on track, and uh, we hope uh, that the uh, 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 huge number of uh, citizens of Juba will have access to clean and safe water in early next year. JICA is fixing South Sudan. Can South Sudan be fixed? Well, um, we are very proud of being involved in the effort of fixing South Sudan. And is this your first time in South Sudan? What can you say about the new nation and what should be done to fix South Sudan, to develop South Sudan? Well, actually, this is my second visit to South Sudan. I came here in uh, 2013. Uh, about the time uh, JICA was preparing uh, the uh, plan of building this bridge. And uh, uh, it, unfortunately, it took uh, nine years to complete this bridge. Original plan was that we were able to complete it in three and a half years. But unfortunately, because of the conflict in 2013, uh, 2016, and COVID-19, um, construction was uh, terminated momentarily. But uh, with persistence, uh, now we are, uh, here we are uh, with the completion of, of this bridge. What can South Sudan do to emulate Japan? to be like Japan? Well, first, you have to preserve peace. Peace is very, very important. And I hope this bridge uh, should become the symbol of peace and symbol of determination of South Sudan to maintain peace. Thank you very much for coming to Fixing South Sudan. Thank you very much. And we are now speaking with those who did it. 
JICA. What can they say about this magnificent event? Welcome. Can you introduce yourself and then we will pick it from. Okay. My name is Fuyuki Sagara. I am a chief representative of JICA South Sudan office. Now, welcome to Terra Media Fixing South Sudan. Today, uh, you tell us what we are witnessing, how long it took. Uh, about this construction work, uh, yes, actually this uh, construction work of the Freedom Bridge has started uh, in 2013, and it was supposed to complete in 2017. That means it takes only four years for the construction. But because of the eruption of the conflict in 2013 and also 2016, and also the COVID-19 pandemic, we had to uh, suspend for a while. Uh, for the construction work. That's why now uh, it took nine years in total to complete. But after all, uh, I'm very happy that we, we have reached this the completion date of the uh, Freedom Bridge. Why did JICA identify that the bridge is what is critically needed? Okay, actually, as you may know, the Juba city is increasing in terms of the population. And uh, almost uh, 11 years ago, JICA has extended support to make a master plan of the uh, road planning and the uh, city planning of Juba City. And uh, in the course of the planning, uh, ring road construction and also the including this uh, new bridge, second bridge, was proposed. And also the South government uh, had a strong wish to construct this new bridge because the current existing old bridge is very old and uh, fragile. And uh, otherwise, uh, South Sudanese government requested to the JICA to, to, do, uh, to extend this new grant aid for the construction of the Freedom Bridge. Yeah. How much did it cost and what is the significance of the bridge? Actually, uh, total cost is uh, approximately uh, 100 million US dollars. What is its significance? Yes, uh, actually, this is uh, uh, Japanese granted, but uh, in, um, in the Japanese government has ex is extending uh, the many granted projects in the various countries in Africa. But this project and this is uh, in terms of size, in terms of budget size, uh, this is very huge project. As the donor, yeah. you have seen the excitement. What is your reaction to that? Yeah, I'm very very happy uh, that we are able to congratulate all together. Uh, both from the South Sudanese people and the Japanese people, and then uh, we can con congratulate each other about the completion of the British Freedom Bridge. This much. is very fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much. The representative of Japanese Ambassador Shitmi Hanio to come and address this occasion. Ladies and gentlemen, Japan has been enthusiastically assisting South Sudan since its independence. In various ways, such as one miss, humanitarian assistances and development projects, with more than 700 million US dollars and more than 4,000 Japanese nationals participation. Taking this opportunity, let me share my thought on one simple question. Why does Japan help South Sudan? It is of course good to South Sudan, of course. But does it? What does it mean to Japan? There are five causes and motivations at least. On Japan side. In other words, legitimate interest of Japan to do so. Firstly, helping South Sudan is perfectly in line with Japan's foreign policy, proactive contribution to the global peace. With this policy, Japan is willing to help a peace building effort on the globe, however far it is from Japan. The Japanese, why? It's because such peace building is an indispensable component of the global peace on which 
Japan's peace and security depends. Therefore, the Japanese assistance to the South Sudanese peace building and nation building effort is embodying the policy proactive contribution to the global peace. Secondly, Japan attaches great importance to the realization of human security across the globe. The human security is a concept that every single human being is entitled to live a safe and dignified life and should be allowed to develop his or her potentials to the maximum extent possible. Japan believes that human security should be guaranteed for the South Sudanese people who have long suffered the civil war. In addition to Japan, the contribution to the realization of human security in South Sudan would add a glorious new page to Japan's history. I believe so. Thirdly, Japan needs stability in East Africa. To Japan, East Africa is the gateway to the entire African continent. And South Sudan's peace and security, stability interrelates with that of East Africa. Thus, Japan expects that South Sudan will remain a stabilizing factor in this region. Fourthly, Japan wants to strengthen the cooperation with South Sudan in addressing global issues, including the rules-based international order the UN reform, environment, etc., etc. Until now, the bilateral cooperation is in a, has been in a great shape. South Sudan extends support to many Japan's candidacies in international elections. Japan highly appreciates UN General Assembly resolution of the 24th of March on improvements of the humanitarian situation of civilians in Ukraine under the Russian invasion. Japan hopes to continuously work with South Sudan in protecting universal core values underpinning the global peace, security and prosperity such as inter-rule-based international order. And fifthly, Japan wants more active bilateral exchanges. I hear South Sudanese honey is very much popular among health-conscious Japanese people for its purity and naturalness. My best city North of Tokyo hosted the South Sudanese National Olympic team for more than a year in preparation for Tokyo Olympic and Paralympic Games. These are good examples of uh, bilateral exchange, but we need to see more of them in the future. Genuva Sudan, oye! Aikyaba Tajuba Kulu, oye! Because of the time we have spent standing in this hot sun of South Sudan, I will not bog you down also with, the, with a long speech. I would like only to appreciate your coming and your endurance of all the the heat of Juba. The best thing I have realized here is just when people came to dance with Emmanuel Kembe, 
I saw my old colleagues, those who rebelled with me in 1983. William Dongaran and War Mabior. These are the people who, who shot the first bullet of the revolution 1983. They are still going strong. And I wish them long life. Today is a great day for the city of Juba, the country of South Sudan and our region. The bridge we are inaugurating today has been a project in the works for a very long time. The need for, for this bridge was identified in 2011 and it was conceived as a, net, a neat link for regional integration that will enhance economic growth. After a lengthy preparatory work, the construction started in June 2013. Despite many setbacks that this project has gone through since its inception, today the Freedom Bridge, a 560 meters long, is a reality. <clears throat> For this, I would like to thank the government and the people of Japan for this important gift to the people of South Sudan. This bridge will stand as a lasting evidence of our true friendship with the Japanese people and their government. Your Excellency, the Ambassador of Japan your country is one of the few countries that does not attach conditions to its development support. We appreciate this need-based development support. Having said this, I would also like to recognize and thank our partner, Japan International Cooperation Agency, JICA, for implementing this project with the utmost professionalism. We are grateful to JICA for staying the course on this project despite numerous challenges it has encountered. As a country, we look forward to continuing this partnership with the, with, the, with the goal of getting more done. At national level, I would like to thank the Minister of Roads and Bridges and all his officials for, for the work they have done to complete this bridge. Equally, I am also grateful to the men and women who worked so hard to build this amazing engineering piece. Your Excellencies, this bridge falls under our priority of reconnecting South Sudan to the region via the road network with the goal of facilitating trade. It is this desire for infrastructural development that we are pleased to have His Excellency Raila Odinga with us today. He is here at his capacity as the High Representative for Infrastructure Development in Africa. And the advices he gave us, I think we should take them seriously because of peace. When they shook hands with President Uhuru, 
whatever differences that was between them disappeared and they are now in peace in Kenya. It is a great honor, Your Excellency, for you to witness the opening of this key bridge that links South Sudan to many countries in the region. In your capacity as a champion for infrastructure in our continent, I would like I would like to say that the opening of Freedom Bridge today is just the beginning and we need your support for us to accomplish the remaining projects. I mean it is the beginning of the road of development that will have to, to move forward. There are people who do not want to see anything good being done in South Sudan. The best thing for them is that they go and hang themselves and leave the South Sudanese people to, to stay alone. In your capacity as a champion for infrastructure in our continent, I would like to say that the opening of, of Freedom Bridge today is just the beginning. And we need your support for us to accomplish the remaining projects. There are many more projects in our infrastructure development plan. We, we need your Excellency's goodwill. And to my people who received this gift today, I would like call upon you all to work hard to maintain peace in our country. Having peace will allow us to focus on service delivery and development project. War holds up progress and the time it took to complete this bridge is a living example of how war delays the development. To the residents of Juba and others who will be using this bridge, I ask you all to show your appreciation to our Japanese friends who gifted us with this structure by taking care of it Let's all drive safely on it because it is our new line and a gateway to the region. I want the reckless drivers to drive on this bridge without carefulness so that the bridge does its long. Thank you very much, and God bless you.